Yo, the name is Alpern and today we are going to be talking about the brand new patch for Company of Heroes 3 that hit yesterday. This is an extremely long video where I basically just go through line by line the patch notes with my first uh, impressions of the actual patch. Uh, however, because it is so long, I will just begin with a very very short summary of what I think about the patch, my general thoughts. Uh, so content wise, the patch is not bringing a lot at all, there is only two new maps included, one 3v3 map and one 4v4 map. Other content included is uh, player profiles, uh, where you can now track your stats as well as your friends or your opponents stats. By clicking through the menus in game, there are basically a profile now that you can check and there you can also see the new uh, ranks. Uh, basically there is a league system, uh, similar to that of uh, Counter Strike or League of Legends, where you have different divisions you know, gold 1 to 5, silver 1 to 5, platinum 1 to 5, and so on. And this is also tracked from uh, basically since launch, even though it's been called Unranked, uh, that's where they get the stats from. Uh, so Unranked is now rebranded to Quick Match and impacts these ranks. Other major features of this patch has been the uh, very much talked about pathfinding fixes. Uh, basically, Pathfinding has been reverted to CO2 levels and after playing a few games I can say it's a lot improved, it feels way more intuitive and it's a major improvement. Another thing is Casemate Gun Traverse which is quite impactful for some of the units uh, that are casemates meaning they don't have a turret. Uh, they can now actually, the gun actually tracks uh, without rotating the vehicle uh, which generally just visually looks better but it also makes them a lot easier to use as when you chase you don't have to be you know pinpoint uh, behind the vehicle the, the gun can actually still fire uh, so major improvements to affected vehicles like the Stug and the Martyr. Other than that there was also quite a lot of balance changes and this is why this video is so long there was a lot of changes. Um, however, I will note that they are definitely going with a mild approach here and after reading them and playing some games I can almost safely say that for most factions these aren't omega impactful. Um, they are definitely going with a softer uh, iteration based way of doing balance changes which I think is completely fair. I think the Relic has been given a lot of shit when they make you know uh, very impactful changes uh, where they Omega nerf or Omega buff something. Uh, so I think this is a good way to do it but I also think they need to be doing patches more frequently uh, because if this patch three weeks from now and nothing has changed from before the patch in in how people play the game I think that's a, a case for concern when it comes to balance uh, safe to say I think some of the nerfs like the nerfs for ATRAD really weren't enough I think the USF nerfs the very few of that were in there uh, are probably not enough and speaking of buffs, USF seems to be getting most of these. They seem very strong, especially some of the elites that definitely saw play and that I personally think were really good before. They got buffed quite heavily, uh, specifically the SSF squads. And I don't really think that was necessary. I think they were mostly just outshined personally by the armored battle group that remains extremely strong as well. It's only really the EC8 that's been nerfed in there. Uh, and that nerf is... It is quite impactful, but it, it really doesn't kill the unit at all, because they are going with these mild nerfs. As for the other factions, Vermac, you see nerfs for the MP40s, you see some machine gun nerfs, but I don't think they are really that hard hitting either. They're, they are also of course getting the general purpose uh, buffs across the board for all the support weapons, meaning the MG42 is going to be more responsive, same as the Vickers or the MG34 or the the, the 30 cal, uh, and same for 80 guns really. Uh, they're not really getting that big nerfs, they're getting like slightly longer setup times, uh, but that doesn't really matter when you also make them more responsive, right? Uh, so uh, those units are definitely probably still a bit overperforming. And then we of course also have the elephant in the room that I've been seeing most people talk about. All the planes, uh, none of the loiters got nerfed, actually it's more so the opposite where the counters, the anti-air, 
all got completely dumpstered in this patch, like just straight up the damage has been nerfed extremely heavily going from 75% bonus damage from their base damage to minus 25% damage on their base damage and not only that some of the planes are also getting buffed uh, notably than the the recon uh, runs of course uh, but some of the other off maps are getting a lot of changes just again across the board uh, minor touches here and there and some quite major so it's going to take some time getting used to those and then of course we have the, the new uh, vehicle speeds and rotation rates. They've actually changed that for all vehicles, which again is going to take quite some time getting used to. Uh, playing some games yesterday, I already noticed like some differences that I, I you know, you don't really get the impression from in the patch notes. Like the, the, the Ketten Crad seems faster than ever, even if you snare it, you can barely catch up. And many such little interactions that you don't really think of when you're just reading the notes. Uh, so in general, I'm not super happy about the patch simply because we've had three months of you know the this current um, sort of meta where some of the factions are really crutching. I'm thinking specifically about the DAC with the Atrad and the Martyr, and I don't think the nerfs on those are impactful at all. So I don't. I do think those matchups are going to be feeling extremely similar to before the patch. Uh, which, you know, it kind of removes the, the freshness of a, having a new patch, right, if the, the meta game doesn't really change. Anyways, the quality of life and the new features are all very welcome. Um, of course, with patches, there's always going to be some things that don't really work properly, at least when it comes to Relic. Uh, there is some glitches and uh, there is some, some things that you can really abuse. I would advise you to not using any of these, you may get banned. If you spot someone doing these, then you can use the, the new uh, in-game social interactions to report them. And also, interestingly, there is some new files uh, within the game files that show some new uh, battle groups that we haven't really seen before. We've seen like some of the units and some of the abilities through, uh, through the tools before, uh, but not in such a comprehensive format. So that does uh, get me thinking if they're working on some new battle groups that we may get in the future. Of course, this is just rumors and we should take everything we see with a grain of salt here. Uh, but there are such things. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, let's keep our hopes up for new content coming for Company Heroes 3. Anyways, enjoy my first impression of the patch notes, and I'll see you guys around. So we know there is some multiplayer maps, uh, 3v3 and 4v4, which is nice for those team game players. We know there's quite a few. Player profiles, we have seen this, they showcased it on the stream last week. Uh, basically you get like ranks now, it's not unranked anymore, it's just called quick match when you search for a game. And what you get is like the, the League of Legends system, you know, it's uh, silver, gold, uh, I don't know, it goes like challenger maybe, and then there's division, so there's like gold, one, two, three, four, five, etc. Uh, which is quite nice, you also get some like statistics, hopefully they've also added some customizations here, you know, in Code 2 you had the, you had the, uh, the like faceplate and stuff. Uh, which you, we do know that there is in Code 3, but we can't customize it because you got the Pioneer thing when you pre-ordered and otherwise it's just grey. Maybe they've added that, hopefully. I think that would be cool so you get some more customization for the loading screens. Uh, menu improvements. Uh, social interactions. I'm not sure what this means. They did mention on uh, in uh, the stream that you are supposed to be able to click a player and then you get their player profile so you can see their ranks and stuff in-game. Um, they did mention that, maybe that's what that's referring to. Challenges. Uh, so here they are updating a lot of these challenges. The challenges system, in my opinion, has been completely bullshit so far. Uh, so hopefully this makes it a bit more, you know, useful. I've just been completely ignoring it, mostly, ever since it released, because it's just been very bad. Uh, you don't get a lot, and uh, uh, at the end of the day, they are also extremely annoying to actually finish. Um, and also, they're quite vague, like sometimes it's like some very vague, like kill kill five infantry with support weapons, and it's like, what counts as a support weapon, or stuff like that, you know, uh, or a light vehicle. What counts as a light vehicle? There, that distinction doesn't really exist outside of the code base, which we don't have access to, you know, um, which is just very infuriating. 
Uh, again, a tech tree would help a lot where you could then see a classes, I think, in-game tech tree and then you could like click the dingo and then there's like a category, it says light vehicle. That would make a lot of sense. Currently, that's not the case though. So it's just very vague and it's just trial and error. Uh, so yeah, pathing, this is quite big. We know this. They're basically going back to the way code 2 pathing mostly works, uh, which means it can phase through, uh, which does help with uh, just... Uh, when it picks the path in general, because vehicles won't be blocking your vehicles anymore. Uh, so it just goes a bit more intuitive. Uh, also, facing through units. Um, infantry, I think this is referring to, or that's here. Because uh, they did show this a bit, where like infantry can still block vehicles, uh, but now they will try to basically get out of the way, way of vehicles, which gets priority. Uh, but this has to be tested, uh, how it actually works. Uh, of course, you're also getting rid of the road preference thing, which was extremely annoying. If you had like a bike and you know you want to wanted to escape quick, it sometimes just picked the road, and very often that road meant it had to like uh, stop and you know rotate, and it just made it, the the pathing sluggish, and it was very unintuitive. Changes to vehicle speed. So all the vehicles in the game had their speed, acceleration, and rotation rates adjusted. All vehicles, that's actually just huge on their own. Like, if they did a patch with only this, like, that would be big, right? That would actually impact stuff. And this is like a throwaway line, so... Okay, all vehicles are getting there. That's going to be a lot of testing here to see how this actually impacts stuff. Um, but yeah, responsiveness is mentioned. A differentiation between all vehicle classes, which still, again... It's very vague because we as a player don't really know what the vehicle classes actually are and where the distinctions go. Like, what does the martyr count as? I have no idea. Is it a light vehicle? It's, who knows? But yeah, we have a bunch of... Is this their new speeds? It's hard to tell here uh, because we don't know the old speeds. I, at least I don't know them by heart, but apparently this is all new. Kind of nice that we get it black and white here. I, again, I wish we had this in-game. I guess we could go and compare these numbers to uh, CO3 stats to, to test the differences. But there are so many changes here that I'm just not going to do that. But if you want to check out the changes, you can go to CO3stats.com uh, and you can check because I don't think those updates live. So you can check the, the, the changes there if you want to see how they change. Because who knows, is this a buff or a nerf for the speed on the 4x4? I don't know. Um, but yeah, lots of numbers here that we have no idea what they mean. Um, event queues. Uh, so they've received an art pass. Okay, so these are the, the things that are on the top left. I was hoping they would do... Uh, I thought they were going to do this because there is this mod which is called the queue mod where you can actually customize the event queue so you can basically toggle which events you can see. I was kind of hoping they would add that so you could, for instance, get rid of all the events that you don't care for. Uh, personally, I think the main, uh, the very big uh, advantage to event queues is that it actually tells you when you uh, spot a mine with a minesweeper, which can, sometimes in-game can be very hard. Uh, but there is an event queue that says uh, mine revealed, and I think that would be really cool if you could like remove all the others, because that's the only one I want to know, you know, I only want the, the mine revealed event queue, that's the only one I personally care for, uh, but you guys might be care for the other event queues, so I think customizing this would be cool, like they you can do in the queue mod. Yo Marcus, we got the, the developer in here. Yeah, so that would be very cool if you guys could add that, personally, um, just like in queue mod, um, just in the settings somewhere. End of match results. So these have been extremely flawed since release. They have been sometimes showing wrong cases. Like we noticed this a couple weeks back. There was a squad in a building. I destroyed that building. And that counts as five losses. And now the, the old stats, they showed us squads. Which means that if you kill a building with a squad inside, that counts as five squad losses in the stat screen at the end of the game. Uh, which was just a bit infuriating uh, because that just means, you know, the, the stats are inaccurate. Uh, we've all seen like the, the negative average map control as well, uh, which is just very clearly wrong. It's very bugged. Not only that, you can't actually add access like your, your post matches. Say you play three games and you want to go back to the third game. You can't do that. There's no match history where you can just, like, check the, the post or the, the last couple of matches uh, results. 
Um, not only that, say you finish a match and you're reading your stats, suddenly it sometimes just throws you out and you can't access those stats anymore. Um, which is just, you know, okay, I'm, I'm not allowed to read the stats anymore, I guess. So yeah, a bit infuriating. Uh, hopefully there is some changes here. We get uh, damage dealt and damage taken. No longer includes them. <laughs> like, this is what I'm talking about, right? Like, the fact that it did this, uh, the, the, the post stats were very inaccurate. So hopefully that's not the case. Uh, kill stats such as soldiers killed and vehicles killed no longer include friendly fire. Maybe we could have a, a different tab for friendly fire um, on its own. Uh, I think that would be cool so you could see how much friendly fire you actually did. I haven't seen the post-match screen yet so I don't know what's actually included. Uh, squad lost stat at the end of the match now shows the correct number. Oh yeah, so that's what I was talking about. It didn't before but now it does. Okay. Um, I also hope they were talking about this. They were going to change it uh, from squads lost to models lost. But yeah, they were talking about on the stream how they're now also going to show uh, models lost, like, just like in Koa 2. In Koa 2, if you you could lose like hundred models over the course of the match, that's what it showed. It didn't sh uh, show uh, squads lost, um, which is what it does in Koa 3. Hopefully, we now get both, uh, which I think would be the the best case scenario. Right? We just want more stats on the post stat screen. Uh, unit efficiency fixed and changed from percentage to a ratio efficiency factor. No idea what this means. It's going to be interesting to see. This has always been the, the bogus stat in my opinion because like efficiency, how does that calculate? Nobody knows. Does it actually mean anything? In Koa 2 you always had efficiency and you got like your MVP squads, but most of the time I think that was wrong. Uh, so we're gonna have to see if this is a useful stat or if it's more just like a cool thing where you go like, oh, my dingo had 500% efficiency. We'll see. Um, we'll see. <laughs> but definitely a bit of a bogus stat. There should be a tooltip saying how efficiency is calculated. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. All right. Minimap and tactical map. The animation for auto supply sectors has been updated to be in line with previous Company Heroes games. Auto supply sec- Oh, okay. So if you're cut off, it's gonna be blinking or flashing. So if you get cut off, you get a flashing. Okay, cool. I didn't know that was not the case. <laughs> but that's good to hear. And territory lines will no longer disappear in auto supply sectors. I didn't know that was the case either. That's just not something I have personally noticed. Modding. To ease the work of mothers who might want to approach the tuning of flight and off-map systems for the first time, we have created archetype abilities in the attribute editor to look at and use as an inspiration source. Ah, oh, cool. So you can customize your off-maps for mods. Off-map ab abilities, multiplayer. Uh, so they did showcase a lot about this. I think uh, we don't know, really know how impactful this is going to be. Um, yeah, we got something about audio here, which we're gonna have to listen to. Uh, flares, so there's different flares for different off-maps. Uh, the way they've done it is there's basically different threat levels to off-maps. The, the less dangerous off-maps, like uh, some LAB, some light artillery barrage, they will have a different color. They will have more uh, yellow color uh, for low threats, like it mentions here. Uh, meanwhile, more dangerous ones will have orange color and extremely dangerous ones, which is... Honestly, most off-maps in this game are absolutely nuts. There's very few that are not dangerous. Uh, <laughs> so we'll probably see a lot more of those uh, red uh, colored flares uh, for the heavy threat abilities, uh, which is the bombing runs, rocket runs, loiters, and high caliber off-map abilities. Um, so I'm very it's gonna be very curious here what they have put to what threat level. Uh, for instance, say the the USF uh, Air Support Center has a strafe, uh, which is very inconsistent in my opinion. Sometimes it kills one model and suppresses, and sometimes it obliterates everything in a straight line. Like I've seen full grenadier health, like six-man squads get completely obliterated by that. Uh, so it's gonna be interesting. What, what threat level is that? Is that a, a yellow because it's only 60 munitions, sometimes even uh, only 40 munitions? Is that a medium threat level? Maybe it, it's dynamic in that it changes if you get more support center upgrades. I, I, we, no idea. We're gonna have to see. Uh, interesting anyway. 
Um, but yeah, green colored flares will be kept for power drop related abilities. I do wonder, because this is a thing we've kind of been begging for, sometimes it can be really difficult uh, to spot whether or not it's an enemy or a friendly if you're playing team games. Like if you go... Um, I've not played that many team games in Call of 3, so take this with a grain of salt, but in Call of 2, there was very many... It was very often a situation where you drop like skill planes, but all the flares are red. The icon on the minimap that shows there's a loiter going on is red, and that's true for both friendly and enemy, so you always had to clarify to your teammate the fact that, don't worry, those are my planes. So maybe they've done something with that, I don't know. I don't play team games a lot. Um, we're going to be playing a bit of team games, actually. I've uh, hit up Helping Hand, so we're going to be playing some team games in the coming weeks, but... It's going to be interesting to see if there's been any work done on that. Planes have colors in Call 3. They did in Call 2 as well, but there is this like short uh, intermission before the first planes actually land uh, for like 20 seconds or 30 seconds where there's no indicator in Call 2. Uh, so I don't know what it's like in Call 3 really, but in Call 2 that's the case. Uh, so you, you know, planes also had player colors in, uh, in Call 2. The actual planes, but there was this short, uh, very short intermission um, where there's no planes on the, the map, right? And all you see is the flares and the icon. Sector of maps. Added sector highlight on both the minimap and tactical map that it will inform players which territories are being covered by a sector ability. So I'm, I don't know by heart which ones these are. I know like um, um, the one that's, I think, literally called sector artillery from the Indian artillery battle group, for instance. That's one. The target's friendlies. Um, ability ret reticles. I don't know how to pronounce that. Reticles? Adjusted various reticles for abilities to match the effective radius of the ability type. So this is good. Um, it's not been very accurate. We've seen loiters strafe stuff outside of the target. And sometimes artillery as well, like the, um, the steering is like... I don't know, it doesn't really fit. Uh, within the the circle, so maybe that's changed. Ground deformation. Uh, so this is cool. I didn't know they did even more work on this. I thought that was last patch, but... Uh, or did they not? I, I'm not sure. I guess there's just been improvements here to the ground deformation. Slowly becoming the moon. US forces, so we'll be going... Uh, I guess the more intricate unit stats... Yeah, they're down here, okay. So this is for... Okay, these are only the off-maps for the factions, okay. US forces. This is gonna be hard to judge. I think we're just gonna have to try these out. I, I do like this though, where it's like... There was this patch in Code 2, like, three or four years ago. Like, off-maps in Code 2 were always extremely random. Like, they were complete gambles. Uh, and then there was uh, the balance team did this one thing that was so smart. The first shell in like a railway artillery will always hit spot on in the middle of where you target. The first shell will always do that in Code 2, which is just such a good change for consistency. Uh, because sometimes you just drop it and it hits like on the outlier far away, like fucking, you know, on a different sector completely uh, on the first shell, which just doesn't make any sense. But if it like... If it slowly increases in number, uh, you know, that's kind of cool. Here it's kind of the opposite, where it drops more scattered at first. We have not really seen this in code before. I'm very curious how this is actually going to work, because if the flares... If the flares show a location, and the artillery drops one mile away, you know, that's a bit annoying, because how the hell are you supposed to know? Right? Uh, so I do think I personally prefer the opposite, but I'm very curious how this is actually going to work, where it gets more accurate, which is kind of the inverse of what Code 2 did, where it stops, starts really accurate, and then it slowly just, you know, expands. British Forces. So this is the Air Burst. This is the, I think it's 110 munitions or something. I've been using this quite a bit. So, and then the Pyramid, this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, the Sector Overwatch, I called it, but it's called the, the Perimeter Monitor. So yeah, the, the thing with this one before is that it only targeted infantry. I don't know if they've changed that, but it did. It does say on the tooltip that it targets all entities, but it only targeted infantry before the patch. I'm curious to see if it targets vehicles now. It says that there's three separate artillery. 
Imagine three... Okay, you're talking about this. So we have some cl uh, clarification here. So this is basically three giant cannons that will acquire and fire targets independently. independently. But they also talk to each other, the, the cannons. So they don't fire the same target. I mean, that's kind of cool. I guess it also uses the new uh, um, flares um, showing which, which artillery will land, which is kind of cool. Recon artillery. This is one of those abilities that are like... Either I feel like this is useless, or it's going to be way too strong. It's it's put at 150, just thinking generally, a recon run or a recon loiter is like 60 munitions, I think. Um, so it's like a 90 munition uh, off map on top of that. I don't know, I'm a bit iffy when it comes to, you know, bundling multiple abilities into one. Uh, UKF in Koa 2 had a lot of abilities like this where they do one million things, you know. Um, just as an example, uh, the Germans, right, they can drop a smoke or the Americans can drop a smoke in Koa 2. Uh, and the Soviets can self-repair a vehicle. Well, the Brits in Koa 2, they did all of that and then they slapped it in one ability instead. So they basically just bundled many of these small abilities into one. I am not a fan of that design personally, but we can have one of two or two of these, I think. It's good flavor, at least. Uh, but I'm not a huge fan. I prefer when you can sort of like, you know, combine them yourself instead of having one ability that does everything. Also, plane health here. I, I know they mentioned this on the stream. If you shoot down this plane, it actually stops the artillery barrages, which is, that's kind of cool. I like that. Uh, so yeah, let's move on. Assault flares. Uh, this one has actually been quite useful. I actually really like this one um, because it just gives you flares and your unit starts sprinting, I believe, and just combat bonuses. It's just useful ability. Uh, but again, it does this thing where there's it does five things at once, and you you're not really sure exactly what it does, but it does things. It just does so many things um, instead of you you know having one flare ability and one combat bonus ability. It does everything. All right, so the naval the blah, the naval bombardment ability has been reworked to be significantly more lethal and reliable. Cool. We saw this in the uh, the, the the showcase stream. It basically just killed everything. Um, but uh, there was a delay there, so hopefully you can run away before that happens. For uh, artillery for DAX, we got the propaganda. This one has been a bit. I'm not a fan of this one. You could retreat, or uh, like you could retreat like the 17 pounder with this. So it, they say here it now only works on squads capable of retreating. So that's kind of cool um, because you saw like 80 guns and stuff retreating. Um, so that's very nice to see that they've changed that. Slightly reduced the delay after which units are retreated. Okay. Cool, so they retreat faster. Obese. Not to be confused with obese. It's reworked. Okay, and that's all the info we get. Cool. Uh, so we got the artillery cover. Enemy units inside your HQ will not be targeted by artillery, even if inside the ability area of effect. Cool. Uh, again, some visual indicator here. Uh, this was something we talked about during the loiter patch, where, you know, the, the loiter, you can put it like on the edge of the base, but it will not target stuff inside of the base. I wish there was actually a, like a visual indicator where it's like, you know, uh, maybe stripe lines or something inside of that icon. I think would be kind of cool to show that you're actually safe in there. Just personal preference if they actually show that. Uh, because if you're not aware of this line in the patch notes, then there's no way. The game doesn't tell you that this is the case. Um, like, for instance, the ambulance in Koa 2, you know, if you put it in your base sector, it has more HP. And it actually gets a little icon that shows that that's the case. Um, so I really wish... They added that here as well, where there's at least, you know, some type of uh, tell from the game itself. Let's continue with team weapons. Aim while on reload cooldown cycles. Team weapons can now move the barrel to acquire a new target while the reload or cooldown phases of the team weapons are happening. They will no longer wait for these phases to be completed before acquiring a new target. So what this basically means is sometimes the machine gunner has to, has to reload. And when that happens and you click a new target, it doesn't actually start traversing the gun until after the reload happens. Uh, but now they will actually target the machine gun, even though they, they are reloading. Uh, so it does make it uh, a bit uh, more, intu not intuitive, responsive is the word I'm looking for. Idle state. Team weapons are now able to track and start the setup process much better when the weapon is not set up and an enemy moves into range. Not sure what this means. I think this might be referring to the bug where they aren't setting up at all. I have no idea. 
Uh, but it does state here that previously it was possible that the team weapon would indefinitely try to follow the center of a squad as it... Oh, okay, so this just is that, when it just never sets up. All right. Prioritization. Team weapons now only start to tear down if all entities of the target enemy squad are out of the arc of fire. Yeah, so this is something we've been noticing, right? If you have a machine gun and there's like a squad coming in from a flank, but still within the arc, and you right click to target that squad, it actually has set up, even though it's still within the arc, um, which was just an annoyance, right? Uh, but that does not happen anymore, apparently, which is very good. Team weapons now tear down much faster. Barrels now snap to the center quicker to allow the team weapons to start the tear down process. This makes team weapons more responsive. A bit worrying about this, but we're gonna have to see. Uh, it, you know, the, the support weapons have been really strong in the past couple of months. You know, the MGs have been extremely strong and the 80 guns as well so it's going to be interesting how this impacts them are they even stronger i'm assuming there's going to be some balance changes specific to some of the machine guns uh, because you know like the mg42 it's already considered op by most of the, the community that i've been talking to uh, so hopefully there is some some you know balance weighing them down again here and maybe they are more expensive or something we'll see once we get to the unit Changes. Turn in place range. Now have a range around them at which giving a reface order won't make them move to the location. Most of the time when doing a proximity click near a team weapon with a reface order, the intent of the player is to pivot and not move, which adds extra delay. Uh, basically, if you have a machine gun and you want to drag, if you get a flank from the right and they're moving to the left, you just, you know, drag on their location. They're just going to set up on the location instead of actually moving to that location first. Which is, honestly, that sounds really good. Uh, I think the best giveaway otherwise is to just use A move because then they instantly set up. But it would be nice to have some, you know, alternatives to always A moving because A move is quite inconsistent. Sometimes it just sets up in the facing of the gunner, uh, which is sometimes not what you want, right? Unit selection. Increase the selection boxes for infantry. This will help when selecting infantry, both the players and the opponents. So this is nice. It's actually a lot of... Uh, misclicks happen due to the fact that you are missing the unit, I even like the boxes above the, the units, the, the unit cards, right? Sometimes it's just very hard to click them. Retreating units no longer remain selected or selectable. This is actually pretty huge. If you like drag select, um, you sometimes select that and then you can't use any of the abilities of the squad like, um, like you know, reverse for 80 guns for instance, um, or vehicles for that matter, if you drag select a vehicle and there's a retreating infantry model, uh, you can't reverse anymore because you selected an infantry squad, so that's, that's quite useful. And this of course, this is probably the bane of uh, uh, 1 million Panzer Pioneers or something along those lines, not to mention Pioneers and Grenadiers, the fact that the build menu stayed open when you selected a different squad, and if, you know, you select a squad that you need to retreat, you just press retreat. And you have the build menu open so they don't retreat. So yeah, cool. Finally, <laughs> factions and ability changes. Auto reverse. So auto reverse range is now reduced to 40. Very good. This, I don't know why they increased this to begin with. But there was a patch a while back where they increased the auto reverse range. Personally, give us more settings. Just let us turn this off completely in my opinion. I'd like to turn this off personally, but I know not everyone is like me, uh, but I would prefer to give get complete control um, because sometimes it's just very difficult to tell uh, when you're auto-reversing and it's just a pain. I would prefer if I could turn it off completely and just use the hotkey um, personally, but that's me. Camouflage ambush bonuses. All infantry squads now use the same camouflage ambush bonus, which is 40% accuracy and 25% damage for 5 seconds. This is very nice. I really like this. This is called streamlining something. And this is something I think they need to do on more things. Uh, we've been talking about this, but why are the 80 gun or 80 snares not streamlined? They are all different. They do different damage, they have different ranges, and they cost different sometimes. I don't know why. Uh, they, they have different wind-up time for the animations, like the Faust is just better than, than an anti-tank grenade. Why is that the case? You know, you can have the flavor of them being different while being, you know, the same stat-wise. I think that's just much better, personally. And I think this is something they need to do for, like, snares, specifically, uh, where they streamline them, I think. Um, sure, you can still have, like, the super heavy snares, like a satchel, um, but... The Faust and the anti-tank grenades, I think they really should be streamlined. I think it should have been done in Ko2 as well. I don't know why you have these like very intricate systems when 
half or 90% of the players aren't aware of it and it's just, you know, it's just such a headache, really. Uh, so do please streamline that as well, personally. Oh, we're getting to Casemate Tank Destroyers now and we know here that they now add uh, Gun Traverse, which is really cool. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the comparison videos of Ko2 and Ko3 on like Reddit, for instance, between like a Stug. Uh, in Ko2, the Stug remains stationary while the, the target is moving. In Ko3, the entire thing just rotates very choppy, or choppy uh, because there's no Gun Traverse. The gun is literally stationary, while in Ko2, there is Gun Traverse. So now they're adding Gun Traverse to Ko3, which means the the vehicle will hopefully stay stay stationary for a bit longer. Um, this of course also means that hopefully once we get there they tune down or you know they change the rotation rates of some of these vehicles. Like we've seen the, the spinning martyrs and stugs where you just can't flank them because they spin in faster than they move. Uh, which is especially hilarious once you get a engine crit on them where the engine goes down and they still spin equally fast because engine crits don't change the rotation rate for some reason. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this is the end of the spinning tank destroyers. And hopefully this means you can actually flank those shits. So yeah, very cool. Uh, finally, casemate is actually a downside and not a upside compared to having a turret, uh, which was really the case before. So yeah, of course, this also means that, you know, they do have that uh, rotation or the, the gun traverse. Uh, so they become hopefully a bit more intuitive to use as well, uh, where you can chase stuff and they can still fire without being pixel perfect behind them. So yeah, really cool. A very good change and about time. We can see here it affects Martyrs, the Stugs, the Brumbars, the Semovente, which gets a shout out. 75mm half-track gun motor carriage, which I have yet to really see in a competitive scenario, but maybe there's some further changes to this vehicle. Cover combat. The range where small arms weapons ignore cover is increased. Whoa. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I remember when the game launched and me and Kimbo had this discussion where we were unsure if this existed at all because sometimes it really feels like it doesn't. Uh, sometimes it's just better to getting cover even though you're hugging each other uh, so I'm very curious if this how big of an impact this has uh, but yeah if you didn't know in I'm gonna make a reference to Koa 2 again that's what we do here in Koa 2 once you get within a certain uh, frame of reference of range like once you're close enough the cover bonuses disappear so it doesn't matter if you're in green cover or yellow cover or no cover once you're close enough that doesn't matter apparently this has been the same for Koa 3 as well uh, but it's been at 7 meters and now it's at 10 meters so hopefully this is a bit more noticeable uh, I also I don't know how they would do this but I would again like the UI to actually uh, you know somehow tell the players that this is a thing M most people don't know this is a thing I've had Co2 players with thousands of hours that didn't know that this was a thing. Um, and I, you know, you have to link them a tightrope video, but you know, tightrope really shouldn't be explaining these because this is such a basic game mechanic. Um, so I really wish this was somehow highlighted by the infantry um, that are within a certain range. Hazard removal package. Uh, so this is now standardized to increase the repair rate, which is very nice. Before this was only true for the Panzer Pioneer, I think. I think that was the only one that had the repair rate, but this was something they did for Co2 way back, where they basically gave them a repair rate increase, which is just, it's just a cool little flavor thing, you know, and it makes this a bit more uh, competitive compared to getting a flamethrower, right? So I, I really like this change. It makes a lot of sense to, to streamline it, where everything gets the repair bonus, not only the Panzer Pioneer. So yeah, very nice. Infantry based timed and passive healing abilities. Squads based timed combat abilities such as sprints and passive squad healing abilities are now disabled when the unit is retreating. I guess this is like referring to like the, the Mando heal passive where they can heal while retreating or the, the, the what else has it? The Falsham Jaegers. Um, and of course the like the, um, the Bersaglieri sprint where they sprint and they retreat even faster. Interesting. Uh, good change, of course. Medium anti tank guns. Increase the pack up time from 1.3 seconds to 1.75 seconds. However, anti tank guns are now more responsive. So, pack up time, this means when you move them. Uh, so, hopefully, this means 
I mean, I ha I've seen so many people complain about a moving support weapons. I don't think it's an issue personally. Uh, but yeah, this means a move is going to be slightly less efficient because a move you basically pack up and pack down a lot. It's going to be a little bit less useful to do that. And it, you're going to be more rewarded for setting up your 80 guns in a good position. Uh, so yeah, cool. Also means that they are probably a bit more... Uh, prone to flanks from infantry where it's gonna take longer for them to run away right from infantry because they have to pack up for basically half a second longer almost projectiles direct fire projectiles such as direct fire tank guns anti-tank guns auto cannons and flamethrowers were re reviewed this changes will increase the liability of reliability of vehicles when firing over low obstacles and prevent exploits when firing through objects I'm wondering if this is referencing the attack ground. All projectiles will immediately collide with obstacles when they miss their target and roll scatter. Immediately collide? Projectiles will now use 3D paths to the targets. This prevents them from auto colliding with low obstacles in the way, such as mines and walls, if the shooter would normally be able to fire over. Ooh. So this means you won't be hitting the mines anymore, but I am very curious about this. It does mention 3D paths, which means it does it does consider the height of the obstacle. So a stone wall would be a, a more annoying obstacle than like a box. But what they did with the anti-tank gun patch, which I actually praise and still do, or praised and still do, was that they basically made the obstacles sh shoot through. I am very curious how this works with attack ground. If they make attack ground useless again, which it was before that patch, then I'm gonna be sad because I think attack ground is really a expression of skill. So I will be very sad if this means attack ground becomes useless again. We're gonna have to trust it for sure because basically on launch attack ground was completely useless because the slightest road elevation or anything like a box, a bush, uh, meant it would collide and not fire anywhere uh, and then they did the patch where it basically did the exact opposite where it ignored everything and they just become lasers going through houses and stone walls this seems to be a middle ground since it's now 3d paths we're gonna have to test this hopefully it doesn't mean attack ground is dead again hopefully recon loiters airborne recon loiter plane health increased doubled okay um Recon artillery plane health increased from two. Okay, so that's tripled. Almost tripled. Almost tripled. Okay. It's gonna be hard to shoot these down. Suppression. Units that are suppressed now take a 33% penalty to weapon scatter on missed hits. This change is meant to increase the, change, the chance of weapons such as grenade launchers no longer landing directly on their target when the unit wielding it is suppressed. Okay. Cool. Uncrewed machine guns and mortars, target size increased from 1 to 20 to facilitate force attacks on decrewed weapons. Very nice. This took uh, Code 2 8 years to do. What does force attack mean? It means attack move on the support weapon. On the, like, how you destroy uh, uncrewed weapons. Snipers, build time decreased from 50 to 40 seconds. I don't think that matters. US forces, US forces have been powerful in 1v1 and weak in larger team modes. These changes will be toning down the EC8 while improving underperforming units like elite infantry and support units. So I don't know how true this is. Has elite infantry really been underperforming? But yeah, I don't think US elite infantry has been underperforming at all. I think SSF... SSF was the main reason you go spec ops, that and weasel. Like, that's the main reason. They were trash? What? I've been using them a ton. I think they were really good. Paras, you could argue, weren't the best, but they were still quite good. I don't think they were useless anyway, or underperforming. Lethality on the 4x4 increased by 10. What? We're gonna read the rest, but what? <laughs> this is already a really strong vehicle, okay. Uh, but I think this one is kind of bad unless you go armored, because armored you get the capping rate for free, um, which is kind of silly, but you do. But yeah, interesting, okay, buff for the 4x4, 10%, that's pretty major, I think. Especially because this means you can actually hunt down stuff like the, the crowd shoots and even more easier. Oh shit. Damage aircraft no longer increases the recharge time of air support center. I didn't know that was the case. Okay, interesting. Double sorted fuel cost decreased from 50 to 40. P47. Whoa. Whoa. Making all of it a bit cheaper. 
I mean, they, I think this is pretty good already. Um, but okay, interesting. Bazooka's reload and wind down readjusted for rate of fire increase. Okay. Nice. Very nice. I like this on the bazooka. I just wish they... I don't see anything here about the VET-1. The VET-1 either needs to be go or it needs to be completely reworked. It's so busted. Um, so yeah, I don't see anything here about that. I don't see anything about attack grounding infantry with the bazookas either. Um, because that shit's just stupid, honestly. But yeah. Captain Retinue now gains shared veterancy. Did it not before? I guess it didn't. Off-map mortar barrage can now be used when suppressed. Could it not before? Or does this mean... I don't know. I guess you couldn't, since it's here. Cool. That's the vet one, by the way. Engineers. Engineer health increased from 80 to 85. This change does not impact health when upgraded to assault engineers. Okay, so the normal engineers is just a bit more chunky. Uh, mortar. The delayed fuse ability. Yes. Yeah, uh, this one kills everything. It destroys tanks. It destroys infantry. Uh, it one shots machine guns. It's very busted, the, the delayed fuse. Uh, so yeah, big nerfs here across the board. We're just gonna have to assume that this is impactful enough. Also, holy shit, they're doubling the time before it goes off. Yikes. Interesting. All right, this gets hits. I, I think that's good. Machine gun team, manpower cost reduced. Whoa. So they're buffing machine guns and they're making them cheaper? I am so curious once we get to the MG42, man. Surely that goes in the opposite direction. They're buffing the machine gun and they're making it cheaper. Okay. Weasel. Machine guns can no longer target aircraft. Oh yeah, it did that. <laughs> um, this is the 76. It's getting cheaper. So this is the mechanized support center upgrade. It's, I think, 200 manpower and 50 fuel it was. Now it's only 40 fuel, so it's 10 fuel cheaper. Interesting. It's probably gonna help the other battle groups that aren't armored in uh, team games for sure, I think. Sherman Bulldozer. Some changes here. Whoa, look at that armor. Look at that scatter. Whoa. Nice. Nothing about the range. I wish this had a bit more range. Happy dozer noises, yes, but I wish it still had a bit more range. Why are all the US units so long range? Their tank destroyer has shit range, their their artillery pieces like the the, the Whispang has no range. Maybe they buff it here. We're gonna we're gonna read here once we get there. Weapon support center, cost decreased. Okay, so this is the sniper and machine gun support center. Armored Battle Group. Sherman EC8. Alright, let's see here. The following change puts the EC8's area of effect and the accuracy on par with the standard Sherman 76mm. This is meant to significantly reduce the EA8's power against infantry. Okay, so they're make basically making it a free carbon copy that doesn't require any of the teching. The, the 76 one does. I think this is a wrong direction personally, but I don't really mind it uh, if this is where they want to go. I would like these two units to be different. I would like the E8 to be different from the 76. Maybe they could make the E8 more like... In Koa 2, you know, it's a it's tankier than the, the other Shermans. It can take another hit. I think that would be cooler if it's just tankier. Uh, which it is. I think it's 80 more HP or something. But I wish they went more in that direction where it's more like a heavy support tank. Um, yeah, it does have more HP, but it's like, that's not really why you pick it. You pick it because it's better at everything and it doesn't require any teching. That's why you pick it. Like, it's not because it's a different vehicle, it's because it's just way more cost-effective. Yeah, you pick it because... yeah, exactly. It doesn't require tier 4 and it doesn't require mechanized support center and it doesn't require the mechanized support center uh, upgrade which is like 200 manpower and now 40 fuel but still that's why you pick it because it's a cost effective like the 76 can't compete because the 76 requires 600 manpower of investments into tech and what 40 uh, 130 right so it also requires almost 200 fuel more to get a 76. Like, yeah, we know this already, but I'm just saying, that's why you pick the EC8. Always. And I think that seems to be staying here. Auto-fire and barrage fire time decreased. 
fuel cost decreased. Nothing here on the Vet 1. I think the Vet 1 on the Scott is a bit nuts as well. I'm talking specifically the white phosphorus. I think it's very nutty. Uh, especially since if you go something like Sooks with this, you have you can just cycle the white phosphorus. And goddamn, it's so annoying to fight uh, this unit with white phosphorus at Vet 1. Um, especially since you get Vet 1 for free because it's in the armored dock. Uh, so it, you always face it with white phosphorus. Uh, and I think white phosphorus is just way too strong for the US. It just destroys all the infantry and you can't react to it because it hits instantly and it's pinpoint accurate. I wish they targeted white phosphorus, um, but they didn't. Okay, so that remains the same. Special operations. SSF, bazooka reload and wind down adjusted for rate of fire. So this is the same as the Sux, right? So 3.5 to 4. Is that the exact same? No, it's slightly better than the Bazooka team. Okay. Whizbang! Okay, give them some range. Oh, wait, wait. Holy crap! Dude, I think this unit was good already, and then they make it... This is 15 per model. There's six models, so this is what? This is like they get an, another model for free. It's like 80 more HP, right? Or am I bad at math? It's 15 times 6. It's like 80 more HP. Which is almost a full model more of HP. SSF did not suck. They did. Uh, dude, I used them a shit ton. They were the main reason you go spec ops. It's just everything else in that battle group kind of sucked. I, I, I think they were really good. I think they were outshined by the EC8 and that's about it. Because the EC8 was completely busted with the rest of that battle group. But the SSF themselves, they were not bad. Oh well, whiz bang. And more rockets. Range! They get some love. 80. Does this mean you can outrange the flak now at least? But yeah, 10 more range. I don't know if that's good enough. I mean, they get more rockets and shit, so maybe. 50% deflection damage. I guess this is on vehicles. Yeah, this is a very good buff. I would like to see even more. Fuck it, give it 100 range or something. Airborne. Uh, the carpet bombing run. Okay, cool. HMG. So, the buff it even more. Okay, this is huge, I think, the recharge time. This was an issue in team games where you instantly drop them down and then you just, you know, you can't, as Axis, you can't do anything in team games, I've heard. Um, so this is very important, I think. Uh, again, I, I've, I've read, like, some different takes on this that... For instance, I think a good change would be if they start on cooldown when you start the match. That way you don't have to, you know, go full on APM StarCraft just to lock in these guys and instantly call them down. Um, so yeah, please do like in Code 2 where all the call-ins start on cooldown. I think it's just necessary, honestly. Because you have to go like full APM, you have to click the right battle group super fast and then you have to call them in. You have to like make 10 commands in like a split second as fast as you possibly can in order to minimax this. And I think that's fucking annoying to begin with, but it's also completely busted that you can drop these in uh, at the first second. Like give them just, give them a cooldown once you, uh, from the start of the game, you know. Um, just do it and I think that would be very nice. Uh, I've heard another suggestion would be that you can't drop them in in uh, in Fog of War. I think that's also an interesting take, but I think, you know, you want your paratroopers and stuff to be able to drop in the Fog of War, right? That's kind of cool. That's what they're meant for, um, to infiltrate. So I think that's good flavor that they can, but give them that cooldown at the start of the match, at least, please do, across the board for all paradrops. Rocket Strafe. Uh, so this one has been very strong at something it's not supposed to do. This one just destroys infantry for some reason, uh, which they are reducing here, which is really cool. This is supposed to be an anti-tank strafe, and it just obliterated infantry, so hopefully this is reduced. Very nice to see. Paratroopers, uh, so the frag grenade fuse time is decreased. This is cool. It's called the cooked frag grenade, but it had the same fuse time as the normal grenade, so it's, it's cool that they actually differentiate the fact that it's cooked. Um, yeah, they're increasing the bazooka. I think this is the same as the SSF here. 3.5 to 4. Yes, it's the same. Okay. They're also upgrading the or in buffing the, the carbine on the short range, it seems. All right. Buffs to Paris as well. Ver. 2 to 1. 
Oh, they're actually making it a scout car. Welcome back. You are now almost a 2 to 2 from Code 2. All right, very nice. We're going to see a lot more 2 to 1s. We were also actually starting to see some 2 to 1s um, before this patch. Like the meta sort of have been shifting for Ver. Ver is such a good designed faction, honestly. It's the best. We all know this, but it is the best designed faction. The fact that it like... It changes. Sure, MP40s have been extremely overpowered, but you still saw some meta shifts for the, the Ver, which I think is just shows how strong of a faction design it is. But yeah, we'll see more 2 to ones because we were already starting to see some of this unit, and now we will see even more of it. So yeah, very cool. Uh, manpower cost decrease on the, the AA gun. Okay, interesting. Uh, Verbal Wind? Isn't this supposed to be an anti-air unit? Yeah, so it does 25% less than their base damage, but like, why? Why are you nerfing the anti-air? Yeah, so it does minus 25% of its base damage. It still deals damage, but it's a lot less. It's basically 75% less. I don't know, I feel like... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I like the fact that they're anti-air units, you know? But if they aren't anti-air units, then... Grenadiers! MP40s, yes! Nerf them big! Is this enough? Holy shit, is this even enough? That's not a lot. What about long range? It's only mid range. I don't think this is enough. It's a 50 munition upgrade and it's like, it's the most impactful upgrade in the game apart from flamethrowers. It seems crazy. I mean, dude, the MP40s have been crazy. It's 50 munitions and it just outshines all other upgrades in the game. Except for like bars and flamethrowers. But the bars also cost 40 fuel, you know? This this doesn't. You just get them for free. 50 munitions and they just kill everything. I'm curious if this is enough. We'll, we'll have to try. You know, they also get like free sprint and stuff. Uh, Martyr. Uh, of course there's more Martyr changes. They get the, um, the gun traverse now. Um, not seeing anything about the rotation rate here, which gets me a bit scared. Uh, but hopefully, maybe that was if we go all the way up. Is that listed up in this? It might be listed here. It's just we don't know what it was previously, so we don't know how hard it hits. But yeah, you can see rotation rate here is 28. What 28? We have no frame of reference here. I don't know what it is. Anyways, um, Martyr. We don't know rotation rates. Hopefully they're nerfed. MG42. Uh, suppression against suppressed targets from 0.5 to 0.35. This is pretty big. That's almost half, right? So this is this means it's gonna take longer for the MG to pin, but the suppression is still as fast. Um, and they're also nerfing the AOE suppression. That's it for the MG42 though? Is this it? That's not enough, is it? They're also making, you have to take this in mind, they're also making the MG42 even more responsive. It's gonna be easier to use. I don't know, we'll see. I'm just thinking, you know, people have been complaining so much about the MG42. And there's, this only changes to pin. That's true, Quadro, that's very true. It's good that they're not just, you know, killing units, at least. That's very good, I think. Machine gun burst length reduced by 15% on mid and far. Machine gun can no longer target aircraft. Machine gun far accuracy reduced. Okay, so this is just a big nerf on the Stug anti-infantry. And the point pank blast area of effect limit decreased from 4 to 3. Still very good ability. They're not killing units, they're just nerfing, so that's good. British forces! 17 pounder anti-tank gun. Well, let's see here. The training forces impact the British more than anticipated. Just some core units are gaining increased performance and the training center will now be available from the start. So I think what this means is you don't have to tech for the training center anymore. It's going to be like the, the DAC armored, for instance, that's like there from the start. So they're increasing the range on the 7th? Dude, did they do that on the 88 as well? And uh, the 15 CMP truck uh, has a cheaper A upgrade now. Doesn't seem to be any other changes, so... I still think this is pretty bad. I mean, the, the only reason you really go this is if you go Indian Artillery and you get the Heavy Mortar, because you basically get this thing for free. Dingo Armored Car. Machine Gun can no longer target aircraft. So this is... They seem to be doing this all over the place. I like it. I think it's good. Foot Guards. Bazooka Reload. Oh my god! A buff for Foot Guards? I so don't agree with some of these elite infantry units getting buffs, man. The Foot Guards are insane! 
Okay. They're even better now. Well, at least the foot guards, you know, they give... You know, they, they emphasize the need for tacking, which as, as Brits you generally really don't, because you usually pick Armored or, or the Centaur, right? and then you just never attack. At least I do. Uh, but if you go Indian, then you can get foot guards, which I guess the foot guards are then competing with the, with the absolutely insane Gurkhas, which I hope get nerfed, uh, but we'll see later down. But yeah, foot guards, they're absolutely insane already. So interesting that they buff them with no other changes. Infantry section. And all buffs. Very nice. I think people have been complaining about this unit. So I think that's good in general. I don't think they've been super underperforming. I actually like the sections because the sections, they are definitely just the A move. Uh, people don't realize. This is what people don't realize. The infantry section uh, DPS curve literally looks like this. That's the infantry section DPS curve, which means you always want to stay at max range because you never get more DPS the closer you get with the sections. So you always want to stay at max range. This is very similar to like A moving LMG Grenadier squads in Code 2, where you don't want to get any closer. You always want to stay at max range. And this is the only unit in the game that has this DPS curve. Uh, so yeah, sure, it means it's hard to get wipes, as people mentioned, but this also means that they trade extremely efficiently as long as you stay on long range. So yeah, just saying, I think the infantry sections are really good. I just think that people don't use them properly, honestly. Forward Observer, Base Howitzer. Fog of War Scatter increase. This means if you are throwing it into the Fog of War, it's gonna be less accurate. And some other changes. This is, I believe, just the base artillery. I think that's what that's referring to. Stuart. Self-repairability self speed increased. I wonder how fast this actually is. It's gonna be interesting to try. And yeah, the training center is now Im immediately available, so you don't need to spend 125 manpower to get it. I think it's a small change, but still. It means you'll probably see it a lot more because the, the price for entry is going to be a lot smaller. So the, this is the flat experience. So the way this works is all the training center upgrades gives you a flat experience. Before it was 500, which usually was enough to get you about 70% to vet one for most units. Uh, but it was different depending on their, their requirements, of course. So now you get a slightly higher flat up uh, increase on experience. Training upgrade experience for medium and heavy vehicles increased. Okay, so it's even more increased for the vehicles, which usually have higher requirements. Uh, so I guess this is meant to scale. Uh, honestly, why couldn't they just put the scale? Like, put it like 60% or something? I don't know. Just suggestions. But mid and far range lethality increased by 5 on the Vickers. Uh, I think the Vickers, especially with the Vet 1, actually is extremely dangerous. It kills stuff very fast. So now it's going to be killing stuff even faster. It's more similar to uh, the Dushka in that sense, I guess. Uh, but yeah, no suppression changes, as people mention here. Still though, with the, there is more changes. You have to remember the MGs get buffed across the board with more responsiveness and less bugs. Uh, so I think we'll just see a lot more machine guns in this patch, honestly, because there's been barely any nerfs except for the MG42, and those nerfs didn't seem very impactful when I read them. So the cooked mills bomb, fuse time decreased. This is similar to the paratrooper, nice. Commando LMG. Uh, now use uniquely infields that have increased accuracy and damage. Holy shit, those are some... Uh, Damage increases, okay. Dang, okay. Commando LMG might be useful now. I wonder how this compares to Gurkhas. Because Gurkhas have really just been outchaining every single other infantry unit in the game. And the incendiary carpet bombing run now drops some more. I've yet to see anyone use this. Supply surplus. Okay, I don't think this matters. Deck. Eight red. Really? Was no changes for the Ver Age, right? Was there? Not that I see, but this is being worked on apparently, so maybe we will see. Interesting. Is still going to delete the infantry? I think so, unless they change. I mean, we're gonna say. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why the Age Red is so good. Number one, it's backed by the Martyr, usually. Number two, you get things like the free uh, damage from the. Oh, they're not touching that. Okay, you still get the insane free DPS from the Armored Support Battle Group. Also, there's a typo here. It's actually called the support in-game. That's the actual name of the battle group in-game. So it's supposed to be support here, not support. Just saying. Yeah, I don't think this is enough. 250 light carrier. Cost decrease from 280 to 260. Now gains shared veterancy. Okay. I mean, that's fine, I think. Armored reserves. 
Whoa, that's a half. Dang. Requires only the Panzer. This is the tier 3, right? Dang. So you maybe you can go tier 1 into tier 3. No, you have to go tier 1 and tier 1.5, right? Into tier 3. And then you can go... Okay, okay, I like that. I like that. Um, I like this. And then they buff the tiger to not make the tiger blow up team games. Cool. Good balance. This is nice. This is very nice. I think this is correct direction. Well done. I, I like this. I like this a lot. Assault Grenadiers. Grenade Assault cost decreased from 45 to 35. Whatever. Combined Arms Ability. Now triggers on the 250 Mortar Half Track, 254 Reconnaissance Tractor, and the Walking Stuka Half Track. So only the Mortar, not the others? Or is this... No, it always did on the other 250s, right? So it just didn't on the Mortar, and now it does. Okay. So this is just streamlining. Uh, still nothing on the bike though, which is fine, I think. Yeah, it already did. Cool. Black 36. Um, increase, ready aim time. So yeah, the nerfs to the 88, which I think is also fine. Black Fearling. Bonus damage to... In Again, I don't know why they... Why are they removing the AA from all the AA units? Like, you have to take into consideration... They do this together with the fact that they increased, if we go recon, they also tripled the HP of all the recon loiters. And I don't know, maybe they lowered the damage on the other loiter or health on the. No, they didn't. So they just tripled the HP and they basically just made all AA P shooters. So I guess you can't shoot down planes anymore, huh? I mean, you really couldn't reliably before either. Yeah, planes were already impossible to kill. Exactly, Havoc. Interesting. I don't know why they are doing this, but they are doing it. So AA is basically useless. That's the takeaway I'm getting. Weapon range increased from 40 to 45. So they're increasing the range as well on the flak fairling. I don't think this impacts the AA. Because I think the AA has a different range. But yeah, I mean, maybe we'll see more tier 1s simply because of the attacking changes. I, I don't know, maybe. It's probably some some guesswork here, but maybe. And they, incre they decrease the long range accuracy on the martyr. Again, we don't know the rotation rates, how impactful those changes are. We're gonna have to test. Panzer Grenadiers. They will now be more powerful without the combined arms. Nice, I like this. So yeah, buffs on the Pigrens. Cool. Stug 3, all variants, so this is... I guess this is both the G and the D. Uh, similar to Ver. Tiger. S-Mines launch now deals significantly less damage to infantry, but now will suppress and pin them. Okay. Booby traps. Increased health on the booby trap. Don't know what that means. I guess this means they are harder to kill. <laughs> No idea. And they now also, this is funny because before they were impossible to spot, but I think the demos are like impossible to spot as well, so I guess it's the same. Um, so Guastatori, reinforcement cost from 40 to 35, SMG moving burst increased. SMG moving burst? I guess this means they're more, they deal more damage on the move? I wonder how much this actually impacts their DPS. Italian Combined Arms Battle Group, Semavente. Barrage recharge time decreased. Barrage reload, ready aim time. That's it. Uh, this doesn't matter though. Ah, it's still bad. Unless the Martyr is extremely bad now, then this is still bad. Uh, if the if the martyr is useless now, then then maybe we see more Semaventus, But the, the martyr just outshines this crappy Italian vehicle. Strafing round. Bonus damage to vehicles decreased from two twenty five to two hundred. Okay, damage increased. Okay. Well, guess that was needed. Then we get to the armored support, and this ability is busted. 
this ability is busted. Honestly, this entire battle group is completely busted. Um, I wish this either got completely reworked or removed. This should not be free. Same with the uh, the machine gun free DPS. Um, like it just shouldn't be there. It just shouldn't be. There is no reason why this exists. Like it just even if that is bad, this just shouldn't be there. It's just bad. It's bad for the game, in my opinion. Both of them. Uh, a lot of these free abilities, we've been talking about this before, but like, free upgrades just because you pick a certain battle group, I think it's just bad in general. Like, same for the USF free vet, vet 1. Like, shit shouldn't be free just because you pick a specific battle group. Because the battle groups currently, they're just like, where do you want to cheat the economy? Like, look at the... Um, for instance, Ver, there's smoke and uh, and free capping on light vehicles. That shit costs 400 manpower for DAC to do. But it's free for Ver if they pick a battle group. Just the fact that you pick a battle group and you're 500 manpower ahead of a different faction, I think it's just stupid. It's just outright stupid. It just really is stupid. Same for this. Why does this exist? Why do you get free vehicle awareness? Uh, for no reason. Uh, what about free self-repair? I mean, that's usually not... I don't think there's one that's battle group specific that's free. That's more like a vehicle thing. I am complaining of the fact that you pick this battle group and you get something for free which you otherwise wouldn't. Like, why isn't this an upgrade? Like, make it an upgrade on vehicles that you can get vehicle awareness radios or something on the vehicle for, uh, I don't know, 50 munitions on that specific vehicle instead of being free for all your vehicles because you pick it. You know, when you pick MP40s as Ver, you have to upgrade MP40s on your Grenadiers. All your Grenadiers don't automatically get MP40s, right? You have to upgrade them. It's not just free, right? Yeah, am I making any sense here? Please tell me. Am I just... Is this a bad take? Why is shit free? Because you pick a battle group. Just make it an option that you can upgrade, right? It's a bad take. Okay, well, that's anyway my take. I think if if Ver picks smoke and... Uh, and uh, uh, self-capping on the light vehicles, it should be an upgrade per vehicle, just like it is per, for DAC. Uh, it shouldn't just be free. Uh, and same here, you know, if if I pick MP40s, I don't get MP40s for free. I have to individually upgrade my Grenadiers. Why is that not the case for all the other buffs? But yes, I am just incoherently rambling, uh, apparently, but that's my take. Shit shouldn't be free. Just make it optional upgrades that you get after you unlock them. That's my take. You know, if if the argumentation is that it's going to be confusing for players, then how come MP40s aren't confusing that you have to upgrade them? Why is that not confusing for players? Because it's not confusing for players. It makes sense that you have to upgrade. It just makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's my take. And this should be streamlined across all battle groups. Every time it's free, don't make it free. Make it an upgrade. Bam, fixed. Because it doesn't have a compact combat impact. You are wrong, Havoc! There are upgrades which have combat impacts, like DAC. They get free damage on all their vehicles if you pick Armored Battle Group. For one CP, they get uh, like twice damage on the ATRAD, for instance. For free! There's no upgrade involved. They just get that shit for free. 